This isn't going to be one of my regular reviews because what we have here is no ordinary car. This is the Honda Civic Type R, and no, that was not meant to rhyme. The exterior of this car is a love it or hate it affair. In fact, it's even more polarizing than pineapple on pizza. Personally, I think it's too loud. Every inch and angle of this car screams, boy racer, look at me, look at me. And no matter how good this thing drives, I may never be drawn to it because it's just a little too over the top for my taste. A few moments later. I never thought I'd say this about the Type R, but this car is so good. You can say what you want about its styling, but a lot of it is functional. At the front, you get an aluminum hood to save weight. There's also an air intake to keep the engine bay cool. A lot of the air dams and body kits actually serve a purpose, such as the vortex generators, which channels air to the humongous rear spoiler in order to increase downforce and stability. Then you have these exhaust pipes, which are overkill, but are meant to reduce the boominess to minimize the drone when you rev it out. But of course, the exterior is not without its cheesiness. You get a good dose of fake air vents front and back, and these fender bulges are a complete afterthought, but are necessary to accommodate the 20-inch rims wrapped in 30-series tires. Good luck if you hit a pothole with this. These tires are so thin, they might as well be made of cardboard. However, these brakes are four-piston monoblock Brembos, and if you don't know what that means, then this isn't the car for you. Hell, I don't even know what that means. Under the hood, we have this car's party piece. Here lies the K20C1, which is basically a two liter turbocharged engine, which produces 306 horsepower and 400 Newton meters of torque. Now, not too long ago, this much power for a front wheel drive car was a recipe for disaster. But what Honda did was they used stiffer parts for improved rigidity over the regular Civic to eliminate torque steer. A lot of this is what you'd find in the regular Civic, but you'd be totally remiss not to know you're in the Type R. From these red seats which are heavily bolstered yet so comfortable, to the red touches and carbon fiber inserts all around the dash and door cards, you also get Alcantara to make it feel even more special. And despite all the flair and the fact that this car was built for the track, you also get heaps of room and practicality here. The trunk can even accommodate 414 liters of cargo. But the best part is, you get this, a stick shift and three pedals. So I think it's time to take this baby out on the road. So when the engineers at Honda set out to build this thing, they had their sights set on breaking the track record at the Nürburgring for a front wheel drive car. held the record for that. But that was shortly beaten by the Volkswagen Golf GTI Club Sport by a fraction of a second. But when this came out, it annihilated the Volkswagen by over five seconds, holding a lap time of seven minutes and 43 seconds. And I don't find that hard to believe. But what really amazes me is, despite being a track-focused hot hatch, 
this still feels very civilized and composed when you're driving it normally. In fact, you can use this as a daily driver without having to pay the penalty in terms of comfort and convenience. Now, you do have to row your own gears, but that's definitely not a bad thing because this transmission is superb. In fact, it's not taxing, it's a lot of fun. And the pedal box, the pedal placement is, is so good that it makes it really easy to heal and tow. But even if you're not an expert, this car can rev match for you. So there are three drive modes, Comfort, Sport, and Plus R. And that varies the, the steering ratio and the adjustable dampers, depending on where you have it set. But even on its most aggressive setting, I'm surprised by how civilized this feels. Now, I can't drive this thing at 10 tenths because obviously we're on a public road, but you can really feel how it firms up when you put it on plus R. Now, the steering is really sharp. It's actually a little too sensitive, but you can vary the steering ratio. However, you're gonna need to put the entire car on comfort mode and it would have been nice if you could vary the steering ratio and the dampers individually. But that's a small price to pay for all the fun you can have behind the wheel of this thing. This car may receive a lot of flack for the way it looks. And while opinions may be divided when it comes to this car's aesthetics, I really don't think there would be anyone to argue with the fact that getting behind the wheel of this thing is pure joy. Cars are evolving so fast and before we know it, everything may soon become a battery on four wheels. So let's relish in this engineering masterpiece while we still can. Thanks for watching.